Today we're talking about the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. You guys really want to know about this foundation. I actually didn't intend on reviewing it at all because my experiences with some other foundations within this line did not go so well. But then you guys kept asking about it and kept asking about it and then I got curious about it. So here we are. If you are not familiar with my foundation road test, or my foundation reviews, that kind of thing. I do not just review things for one day and give you my verdict at the end. I review things over a period of several days. I try foundations with different primers and powders and wear it in different ways to give you a verdict of how things work for me and my skin type and who I think they work for. I'm 43 years old. I have combination oily skin. I do have sensitive skin as well. And I live in a very hot and humid environment for the most part during the year. I live in New Orleans. It's not hot and humid here right now though because we are in January. So that is just a little bit about me. I like to tell you that up front if you are unfamiliar with my channel. And if you are new to me, I would love to have you hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell so that you're always notified of when I upload. If you don't specifically say always, YouTube just won't let you know sometimes if I've uploaded a video. I hate being a broken record. I hate doing that, but it's just a fact of how YouTube is. I'm going to show you the application and then I'm going to cut to the summary. Sometimes I talk through check-ins. Sometimes I just show you the check-ins while I'm doing the summary. That's what I'm going to do today. I just think it's going to flow better. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this foundation retails for $14.99 for one ounce of product. It is in this really cute glass bottle. It's a nice sleek square and it's got this cute little, well, no, it's messy pump. You can tell I've been wearing it. It's just kind of this squatty little square pump. I think it's pretty cute. I am in the shade 445 Vanilla and there are 30 shades in this product. So what it says about this foundation is that it is a breakthrough longwear foundation with breathable skin technology, up to 24 hour fresh wear. Oh yeah, something important about this particular foundation road test. I did wear it for 24 hours. We'll get into that later. <laughs> it does provide medium to full buildable coverage that lasts all day and allows the skin to breathe. The formula's three oil absorbers resist sweat, water, and transfer. The ultra thin liquid goes on smoothly to give a fresh, healthy looking complexion that lasts. Color stays true and blends in evenly so your makeup looks fresh all day, non-comedogenic, and it's formulated with SPF. I think the SPF, yeah, it's 25. And it says it's good for all skin types. Let's see if it says anything special in the how-tos. Sometimes they tell you specifically how they like you to apply it. And it just says fingers, brush, or beauty sponge. That is nice. Alcohol is the sixth ingredient in a long list of ingredients. I know a lot of you like to know that. Take that for what you will. Some people find that to be very important. Some people don't. It just depends on what your philosophy on alcohol is in cosmetics. It is going over your skincare, over your sunscreen that you've already applied. You should have already applied sunscreen. This does not substitute the amount of sunscreen that you need to be putting on your face. So this does go over your sunscreen. And it does have some added fragrance in it towards the bottom third of the list as well. So I wanted to let you know that before we got into the application and we can do that now. I love how this foundation blends into the skin. I feel like if you are someone who needs to get ready in a hurry, this is going to be a great foundation for you, especially if you want a foundation that has a decent amount of coverage. I do agree with the L'Oreal website. This is a medium to full coverage foundation. I can get medium coverage with a damp sponge. I can get full coverage with a brush. I can even get full coverage with a sponge if I build it. It never looks cakey. It never looks heavy and it never feels gross, which is really nice. It does feel good on the skin. This day that I'm showing you the application is done with a damp beauty blender. I did also apply it with a brush on a different day and it applied really nicely. I just personally prefer applying my medium to full coverage foundations with a sponge. I just feel like it applies quicker, it applies more easily for me, and that's just my personal preference. But I don't think you'll have a problem with a brush with this foundation because it is so fluid and so blendable. It's almost like I feel like it covers my skin well, but 
it makes it look healthy at the same time. It's not like it's masking my skin. I don't know if that's even possible, but that's what it seems like. You can see on one half of my face versus the other how well it covered, and that's with one layer. It didn't look cakey, it didn't look heavy, but it covered my redness and some spots really, really nicely. So I'm pretty impressed, especially with how quickly it applied. So I'm gonna finish this application and then I'll show you what it looks like once I'm finished and the makeup is fresh because that has been very consistent every day, no matter what primer I used or anything like that. I did use the same control powder throughout this review because now that I have a powder that I really enjoy, the Lancome Long Time No Shine, that's pretty much what I use. You have to use whatever powder works for you. My primer that I use in every foundation road test is my Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer, and then I try others, or and then I try no primer. <laughs> I did use no primer, and it was fine. I don't think it looked as great as it does with a primer to help blur the pores. I used my Farsali Blur Drops. I used the Fenty Primer. I used the Too Faced Hangover Primer just to have one that was a little bit different from the other ones. So I used it with various primers and I feel like it's pretty consistent with primers. I do feel like I didn't get quite as much shine control with it on the day that I wore it with the Too Faced Primer. But as far as the other silicone type primers, the Fenty, the Farsali, and the Hourglass, I feel like it were pretty much the same and those were my best days. And so I'm gonna talk about that more in the summary. So this is what it looks like after application when everything is fresh. I feel like the skin looks good. It looks smooth and pretty. This is before the day gets started, before the end of the day, before anything can happen, you know? Everything's great. So now I'm gonna segue into the summary and tell you kinda of how everything went on all the days. And we'll see if this review stays on that positive trajectory. Sometimes things can change pretty drastically from after application to the end of a foundation review. I literally woke up looking like this this morning. This is how I woke up because I slept in this foundation last night. I do not sleep in my foundation ever, ever, ever. I have slept in foundation twice in my life since college because every time I do it, it breaks me out. And sure enough, I have three little spots here. I can't wait to wash this off my face, but after doing it, I thought I have to film my foundation summary like this. The only thing that I have done, and I did this before I realized I was gonna film my summary. I had to drop Brooke off and I thought I might need to get out of the car and talk to people. I spritzed my face with some Smashbox primer water and kind of pressed the foundation into the skin, but I didn't add any more coverage no powder, nothing, and I put lip balm on my lips and I kind of, you know, zhuzhed my hair a little. That is all I have done <laughs> since I woke up this morning because I wanted to show you guys the coverage after 24 hours. I do think that some kind of wore off in spots, but overall it looks, you know, wearable <laughs> after 24 hours. It's not perfect. I didn't notice any transfer onto my pillow though, which is kind of weird. I just think it maybe <laughs> disintegrated into my skin, which is probably why I broke out. I'm gonna get into what I like about it, what I don't like about it, who I think it's best for, if I would rebuy it and all that jazz. Okay, so I do like the packaging. I think it's pretty cool. I like the little small lid, although I do think that if you travel with it, there might be a tendency for this lid to pop off. So it probably tape it down or, you know, decant it and put it into a travel container. You know, it's kind of a sleek little rectangular pump. I like it. I will say I'm impressed with the wear time. I think that every day I wore it, it lasted a long time on me from day to night, overnight. I'm not upset that my color cosmetics have worn off after sleeping on a pillow. I did not sleep on my back last night like I should have, like we all should. I did end up on my side, on both sides, and that's okay. I feel like, you know, there's still some pigment on my face. I feel like my under eye concealer looks a little bit dry, which is probably why the rest of everything else looks, you know, a little bit more sparse on my face. I like the way this blends out on my skin. I feel like it applies very quickly, and I love the way it looks on my skin. I feel like it looks really nice and fresh. It also feels really good on my skin. Never during the day, no matter how long I have it on, do I feel like my face feels gross. 
even now, I don't feel like my face feels gross and I slept in it. Now, it did feel a little bit better once I spritzed it with a little bit of spray. I like that it's not a heavy matte finish. I like that it's just kind of a fresh looking finish on me. I think it looks good on my skin. Every now and then, Brooke, my 13 year old, will give me her unsolicited opinion on the foundations that I wear. And I actually really appreciate it because Kids are honest, right? And sometimes she will come out and just be like, what foundation are you wearing? It looks really good on your skin. Mom, what is that? This was not one of those foundations and I was surprised because to my eye, it looks really good. But to her really good 13 year old eyes, she said it didn't look as great as some of my other foundations on my pores. So I was kind of surprised at that. That was on the first two days that I wore it. And on those first two days, I wore it with my regular Hourglass primer. I wore it with my Farsali primer. And those are typically primers that really smooth me out. So I'm not sure why this, you know, isn't, you know, super poor blurring and smoothing for me. I think it's just more of a natural, fresh skin finish. There's nothing wrong with that. It may just not smooth as much as some other foundations do, but it still looks good. I think there are foundations that do smooth me a little bit more than this does. It doesn't make it a bad foundation. I just think it looks a little bit more natural and skin-like, and we do have pores. I've been pointing that out a lot more lately because I feel like I've tried some foundations that not emphasize the pores, but they don't necessarily camouflage the pores. They just make your skin look like skin, which has pores. So that is kind of what this foundation does for me. Does it keep me matte as long as I like? No, it doesn't. I have oily combination skin, as a lot of you know. I like a foundation that doesn't have me checking in the mirror a lot during the day to see if I'm shiny. This is not really one of those foundations. I feel like I do have to check in. I have to look, you know, every three or four hours to see if I have some breakthrough shine. It does give me some breakthrough shine. I do have to blot. For that reason, it kind of annoys me, but I still do like the finish. I still think, you know, it looks pretty. It photographs well in natural light. It photographs well with a flash. I think if you have normal skin, maybe even dry skin, it didn't seem to catch on my dry areas. If you have dry skin and you've tried this, I'd love to hear from you down below. If you have oily skin too, let me know if you experienced the same thing that I did with the oiliness during the day, if you had to blot like I did. Overall, I think this is a nice foundation. Would I repurchase this foundation? Probably not. And I feel weird saying that because I feel like so many people are raving about this foundation right now. But I feel like for me, because I do have to kind of maintain it through the day, and because, you know, it does kind of not emphasize, but it just doesn't blur quite as much as I had hoped. It's a good foundation, but it's not one of the best that I've tried. I probably would not repurchase because I have others that I feel like I'm going to reach for more. There are qualities that I like about it, but there are qualities that kind of balance it out to where it makes it one that I probably would not repurchase. I don't dislike it, but I don't really love it enough to counterbalance that. So I'm kind of neutral about this foundation, I guess. I don't love it, but I don't really dislike it either. Let me know what you think about this foundation, if you love it, if you don't like it, if you feel kind of neutral about it like I do. I hope you enjoyed this foundation road test. Let me know what foundation review you want to see next. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.